So far, we have not seen complete panic. Hi, I've got Jeff Clark on the line, the senior precious metals analyst from goldsilver.com. How are you doing, Jeff? Well, I'm doing great, Mike. It's very hot here in Northern California where I am. This is our eighth consecutive day where the temperature's been over 100 degrees, and we're in the midst of rolling blackouts here with our energy use. So hopefully we'll get this video done before, uh, uh, before we lose power. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you wrote a great article recently, uh, and so can you tell me about it? And uh, um, I might ask you some questions, or you can ask me some questions about what I think. But uh, let's go over your article that is titled, uh, Here's Every Gold and Silver Correction in Their Two Biggest Runs Versus Today. That's right. I thought it was very timely to really look at this because one of the biggest questions we've been getting from everyone for weeks now is when is there going to be a correction? How big is it going to be? And is it a good time to buy? So I thought it was time to look at this. And this is a theme, if you will, that's been running through a lot of uh, gold and silver uh, investors. So what I did here in this article was to go back and look at all of the corrections in gold and silver and their two biggest run-ups because we've had a big run up here and to look and see what those corrections were like in those other run ups and compare them to today. And if you just scroll through these charts, you'll see that there were enormous amount of corrections. I measured every gold correction that was over 3% and every silver correction that was over 5%. So from 1979 to 1980, we all know gold and silver really had a big run up then Gold uh, corrected a total of 11 times. Silver corrected uh, over 12 times, just in a 13 month period of time. And then the big run up from 2009 to 2011, that was a big gain for gold and silver. Uh, gold averaged a correction of 3% or more uh, almost every other month on average. Silver had a whopping 23 sell-offs of 5% or more during that two, two and a half year period of time. So when you look at the corrections we've had today, they're actually very normal historically to what has happened in the past. And the big hint about all this, of course, is that, pardon me, in, in my opinion, you wanna buy, if you're a buyer, if you're looking to add ounces, you wanna buy during the dips and not chase mm -hmm. the price when it's moving higher. But uh, this is a very popular video on Twitter as well, I, I, or excuse me, a very popular article on Twitter as well, I'll point out. Uh, but Mike, what was your reaction to seeing this article and all the corrections that gold and silver have had in the past? Well, um, you know, uh, one of the things I said recently in my last video, I think it was, is that uh, there's each one of these pullbacks that we have now is basically setting a new floor. The pullbacks are good, but they're going to be limited, I believe, from now on because now the big money is coming in. The big pension funds, hedge funds, uh, the, the, uh, these funds that don't have any gold in their portfolios. Uh, recently, Ray Dalio uh, doubled his position from half a billion to a billion dollars in his fund in uh, gold. And then Warren Buffett uh, just bought uh, uh, a significant a sizable number of shares of, uh, of Barrick Gold, but it's only 0.28%, 0.28% of Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio. So he's, there, we're going to see the billionaires and these big hedge funds and stuff accumulate positions and they're going to be using these pullbacks too. So I think the pullbacks, uh, you know, you can do all this technical analysis. I just did some and, uh, uh, but, uh, these areas that it would normally pull back to, I don't think we're going, we're going to see higher and higher volatility. And the peaks and the dips are going to get bigger and bigger. Like I said in my last video, uh, gold and silver are sort of like a reverse roller coaster. They start with these little, you know, roller coaster, you go to the highest peak, and then the, the dips and peaks are smaller and smaller as it goes. It's going to be the opposite with uh, precious metals. And so this is a great article because it shows you uh, that 
these, it, these pullbacks are nothing to be afraid of. They're something that is good and healthy and you want those and it gives everybody an opportunity. And you know, I started goldsilver.com and I started doing this because I was on a mission to try to save the middle class. Uh, right now, we're seeing the country most likely going very socialistic, uh, which scares me a lot because uh, prosperity comes from the uh, individual uh, voluntary transaction. And, uh, and as you go towards socialism, you're having forced government transactions where uh, you know, a voluntary transaction makes both people better off. A uh, forced transaction, one party is better off and the other one isn't. And uh, uh, it crushes prosperity. Uh, but uh, when it comes to gold and silver here, uh, this is, uh, you know, I, when the, the middle class of each country in, in a, um, you know, in a first world society is about uh, 70% of the population. So uh, as goes the middle class, so goes the nation. And by getting as much gold and silver into the hands of the middle class, uh, it, it can, I believe, sort of save the country. Um, and so that was my goal when I started goldsilver.com was to try and get as much precious metals into the middle class before uh, a really big crisis. And we can see that there's a crisis coming up at us fast. And so these pullbacks, people should be using them. Uh, they're, uh, going to, they're, they're not going to hit all of the technical targets uh, from now on, most likely, because of the billionaires coming in. But you know, um, back in uh, 2002, is when I first started buying gold. It was October of 2002. And then the, uh, I, I bought when the spot price was around 315. Uh, and then the price started rising immediately. And it ran up into the, uh, I, was, I was waiting for a pullback and waiting for a pullback and waiting for a pullback and it didn't happen. And the price got to like 380, which is a significant percentage increase. And I went in and I bought uh, some more gold eagles. And um, the, the day that I did that, the price started falling and that was a peak. And it took like, it was over a year before it exceeded that previous peak. It was uh, like almost a year and a half. And so I was just punishing myself, you know, to, how could I be so stupid for buying at a peak? Well, guess what? I wish I could make that same mistake again. Wouldn't you love to buy $380 gold? <laughs> right. Very good point. And I yeah, want to so highlight. Oh. I, at, at these prices, I just, I just think dollar cost averaging in and accumulation is more important than where the price is right now because we're going to many multiples of uh, where the price is currently. Right. And that, that's a good point for me to highlight because if, you, if someone is of our opinion that gold is and silver are headed here and we're down here, you know, all these corrections really are nothing but buying opportunities. And I just want to highlight something you said that I think is important. As the price continues to rise and we, we get into this bigger mania, um, the volatility is dramatically going to increase both up and down. And so, yeah. Not only will the run-ups get bigger, but the declines will get bigger as well. We've already seen that this year. Silver has sold off by 31%, and a week or so ago, it sold off by 16%. So we've already seen some very big declines. But looking back at the chart, what were those? Nothing but buying opportunities. And so I don't right. think so the weight to determine, well, is Mike buying now? They they or is Jeff buying now, they can just look at the chart and say, look, this is a big correction. This is probably a good buying opportunity. Yeah, you know, I wish I had had more cash on the sidelines back in March when uh, Silver did that pullback to $12, that 31.3% pullback on your chart in your article. Uh, and the gold-silver ratio went to 122 Uh I, I didn't catch that exact dip because I really didn't have uh, any excess cash that I could uh, plow into it. So 
Um, but I really wish <laughs> I had. Uh, anyway, the gold-silver ratio, um, what do you think about that, and what does it tell you to buy? Uh, that's a good point. It was at 122, maybe 123 on a daily basis. I remember back in March. It's mm -hmm. now fallen as you and I talk here today, Mike. It's just below 72. Uh, the long-term average, uh, depending on your time frame, how far you go back and how, how you know what time you actually include, is somewhere between 50 and 55. So as yeah. dramatic as the fall has been in the gold silver ratio it's not even back to its long-term average yet. So the buy is still actually with silver, meaning silver is more undervalued than gold uh, currently. So I, I, I'm with you. I wish I could buy more gold, but it's hard to do that. Even though the ratio has fallen a lot, it's still historically above its long-term average. Yeah, you know, whenever it's above 70, I usually buy only silver. And then when it's between uh, like 40, 40, 45 and 70, I buy a mix. And when it's below uh, 40, 45, even 50, when it's below 50, 45, then I buy only gold. Um, and I use the gold-silver ratio for my accumulation plan. I really don't sell any of them because uh, I'm measuring the Dow-Gold ratio and the uh, uh, price of gold uh, compared to the currency supply, the price of gold times the amount of gold that the U.S. has compared to the currency supply. There's a whole bunch of factors, the gold real estate ratio. And those things have not um, gotten anywhere near uh, their peak, letting me know that this cycle is not anywhere near being over yet. It's just not time to be selling any of uh, my position. It's time to accumulate. And I really absolutely believe that there is a big banking crisis coming, uh, a global monetary crisis. Uh, and I'm prepared, preparing for that. And um, that will be when there, so far we have not seen complete panic. And gold and silver are the ultimate Giffen goods. A Giffen good is, there was a, uh, an economist, I can't remember his first name, I think it was Richard, I, I can't remember, uh, but uh, from the 1800s that, uh, was, uh, that came up with a theory that there are certain uh, goods that don't follow the normal supply demand price ratio. And that uh, the uh, that gold and he didn't say gold and silver, but gold and silver are the ultimate gift and good. The more the price rises, the more people want them. That's and, a very, very good point. And that's a, a good point at which to highlight and kind of wrap this video up for today. Uh, just that uh, we're still in an accumulation mode. We're nowhere near an exit point. Uh, that's for another day. That's for another time. Uh, we're all still here at gold and silver in an accumulation mode. So if you want to read that article, by the way, it's on our website. It's titled, Here's Every Gold and Silver Correction and Their Two Biggest Runs. This will be a good document to hold on to, look uh, at in the future. And when we get the next big correction, I know I will be, just to remind myself, hey, corrections are normal in bull markets. So, Mike, uh, thanks for joining me on this call today. And uh, uh, we'll look forward to the next one. Okay, thanks.